Hello, everyone, and um, welcome to this webinar on the IESB's third agenda consultation. My name is Aisha Akinwale, and I am an IESB technical staff working on this uh, third agenda consultation. I have the pleasure of being joined today by Nick Anderson, an IESB board member, and Rachel Nobley, a member of the technical leadership team at the IESB. Now, the purpose of this webinar today is to provide an opportunity for engagement on the request for information about the IASB's third agenda consultation. So after providing an overview of the consultation, we'll go into more detail on the three key areas that's covered in the consultation. Um, these areas are the strategic direction and balance of the board's activities, the criteria for assessing the priority of financial reporting issues, and finally, the financial reporting issues that could be added to the board's work plan. And that will then be followed by a Q&A session. So if you have any questions for us today, please use the box on the left side um, of your screen to submit them. Um, we'll save plenty of time at the end to respond to all your questions. Now, just to note also that if you would like to download the slides that we're using today, you should see a link to do that again on the left side of your screen. And the one final note um, before we get started is, um, as always, the views that um, are expressed today during this webinar are those of myself and the other presenters, and they're not necessarily the views of the IESB or the IFRS Foundation. So now many of you may be aware that the trustees of the IFRS Foundation are um, undertaking a strategy review. So before we start, uh, let me clarify the relationship between that strategy review and the IASB's agenda consultation. So what this agenda consultation by the IASB is doing is seeking feedback to help the board prioritize activities within the current scope of its work. And the current scope of the board's work is financial statement and management commentary for profit-oriented companies. Now, the trustee strategy review, on the other hand, is exploring a potential expansion of the foundation's role through the creation of a new board that will sit alongside the IESB to set sustainability reporting standards. Now, we do understand that there may be a need for interaction between the IESB's work and any new sustainability standards board. However, we can't definitely stay at this stage what that interaction would look like. What we can say is if the decisions taken by the trustees either affects the scope of the IASB's work or indicate the need for capacity from the IASB to support any interaction with um, any new sustainability standards board, then that can be considered in setting and finalizing the IASB's priorities and work plan. So with that, we're going to start with the um, board's agenda consultation. So the IASB is um, committed to, com um, to consulting every five years on its priorities. And although the publication of this um, request for information was slightly delayed due to the impact of COVID-19, we are confident that this will not affect the start date of potential new activities and projects. Um, the board's work plan does not cover um, distinct five-year periods. And um, what we mean by that is the board does not commit to new projects on the 1st of January 2022 with a target completion of um, within the five years. Actually, in practice, the board continues to work on projects that have been previously identified as priorities in the last agenda consultation and new activities and projects that are identified in, in this agenda consultation will commence over the course of the next work plan. Similarly, um, the board does not wait until the agenda consultation cycle to prioritize all projects. Um, the board um, may add urgent projects to its work plan after an agenda consultation cycle has been completed. And we've seen this recently with urgent projects like those on IBO reform and COVID-19 related rent concessions being added to the board's um, work plan. Now, this is the third time that the board is consulting the public on its priorities. Um, so the board published a request for information in March, and that remains open for comments until the 27th of September. And we expect the board to start deliberations on the feedback that it receives in the last quarter of this year, with a view to publishing the 2022 to 2026 plan and feedback statement in the second quarter of 2022. 
it's, it's absolutely critical, really, that we hear your views on what the board's priorities should be. And um, your views combined with the board's own experience and expertise would really help to shape the board's thinking when determining its priorities for the next five years. Now, what, what does the, an agenda consultation cover? So the objective of an agenda consultation is really to gather views on three key areas. Firstly, the strategic direction and balance of the board's activities. Um, as you can see on the slide, the board undertakes six um, main activities. So what we are looking to do here is define how the board should balance its limited resources across these activities. The remaining two objectives, um, they focus um, on the particular activity to develop new IFRS standards and major amendments to IFRS standards. And that activity is very much covering the board's research and standard setting projects. So what the second objective is focused on is the criteria that the board should use to assess the priority of projects that are suggested as part of this agenda consultation. And so we're seeking your feedback on what those criteria should be. And then finally, the third objective um, is seeking views on the new financial reporting issues that could be given priority in the board's um, work plan. In a moment, um, I'll hand over to Nick to talk through the strategic direction and balance of the board's activities. And finally, Rachel to talk through the criteria and the priority of financial reporting issues that could be added to the work plan. Uh, we'll be using a few polls in today's webinar, and so we'll look forward to your participation in those. And with that, um, Nick, can I please hand it over to you to talk about the strategic direction and balance of the board's activities? Thanks, Aisha, and hello to everyone. Um, yes, the balance of the board's activities is an important part of this agenda consultation. Uh, we do not focus, uh, we, we have not focused on this area in detail in previous agenda consultations. However, the board does a lot more than just standard setting and, and what you see at the board table. Um, you know, in reality, we operate in a dynamic environment and changes in that environment clearly affect the board's priorities. So while it may be tempting, I'm sure it is tempting for all of us to focus on specific projects that the board could add to at the work plan, please bear in mind that if you have strong views on the direction and the overall balance of our activities, we would love to hear them. So on this slide, you can see an estimate of how the board's resources are currently deployed across our six main activities. We want to hear your views on whether this current balance is appropriate for the next five years or whether we should make changes to the level of focus on any one of them. One of the challenges that we face as a board is limited capacity. And here I'm referring both to the board's capacity but also the capacity of our stakeholders to engage with us throughout our consultation process. Therefore, please keep in mind that increasing the allocation of resources to one or more of the board's activities would mean fewer activity, fewer resources available for other activities. We have to balance the books here. So with that in mind, let me talk through each of the six activities in turn. Now, the first activity is one that you'll be familiar with. It's quite self-explanatory. It's delivering new IFRS standards or major amendments to standards. And so that's all about our research, standard setting, and the post-implementation reviews that we are required to undertake. So the level of focus on this activity affects the number of the new financial reporting projects the board can start over the next five years. The more focus on this area means more new projects we can start uh, and we'll cover those projects later in this webinar. We are aware that some think now is time for a more stable platform. Um, a lot of time and energy and resources has been spent on the implementation on standards such as IFRS 9, 15, 16 and IFRS 17. Um, they think that uh, the way forward for the board should be to offer a period of calm uh, from now. Now, we understand that view. However, one thing to consider is that if any of the major projects on the board's current plan is finalised, it will be some time before that work will be effective. And certainly any new projects that the board might add to its work plan as a result of this agenda consultation are not expected to be completed in the five-year cycle. So all of this, because our due process, takes a period of time. 
So this means adding new projects to our work plan as a result of this agenda consultation doesn't necessarily conflict with that desire for a more stable platform. Together with the IFRS Interpretations Committee, the board also helps stakeholders obtain a common understanding of financial reporting requirements in a number of different ways. This work helps to support the consistent application of the standards so that they're globally comparable. Now, as you can see on this slide, activities here include monitoring consistent application to ensure that we respond in a timely and effective manner, addressing application challenges through agenda decisions, narrow scope amendments, and educational materials. If the board were to focus more resource on this activity, it could, for example, address application challenges through new channels. This might include uh, building capacity to support emerging economies and new adopters uh, to regional IFRS training workshops and case studies that could develop capacity to make judgments to apply the requirements. As some of you may know, we also have the IFRS for SME standard, and that is developed specifically for companies that do not have public accountability. Today, we maintain the standard through periodic reviews, and indeed, one of those reviews is currently underway. And we also publish educational material to support greater understanding and consistent application of that standard. The IFRS for SME standard is currently required or permitted in 86 jurisdictions. If the board were to focus more resources on this activity, we could, for example, work with national standard setters and others to explore opportunities for greater global adoption of the standard. With the increasing consumption of digital or finance reports in a digital format, we often hear calls for the board to devote more time to considering the interplay between technology and financial reporting. So at the moment, our current focus is on supporting the IFRS taxonomy. The taxonomy is used to tag financial information so that can be uh, consumed digitally. And our work plan in that respect is largely to update the taxonomy for new or amended standards and to reflect what we call common pra reporting practice. We also work to ensure that requirements, our new requirements and standards are technology neutral. That is that the requirements can work in both a paper-based and a digital report. So if we were to devote more resource to support the digital consumption of financial reports, the question becomes, what further activities should the board undertake? Uh, for instance, the board could stick to its historic focus, and that's, I say, the IFRS taxonomy. And this could involve uh, improving it to better meet the needs of the market. Uh, the board could give greater consideration to how dis presentation and disclosure requirements in IFRS standards can be enhanced to facilitate the digital consumption of finance reports. One example of that is moving away from a technology neutral perspective to developing requirements that could have a technology first perspective. That shift in perspective could mean, for example, the board requires even more granular information to be presented and disclosed because technology allows us lots more data and to consume that in a more efficient way. The board could also work with uh, others uh, or work more with others in the, in the kind of the digital finance, uh, financial reporting ecosystem. And that's really towards realizing the benefits of high quality, globally comparable financial reports that we see already on paper and to realize that more in a digital world. Uh, that could mean identifying partners that uh, control the adoption of the IFRS te uh, taxonomy. Uh, those control the quality of electronic data, as well as those who facilitate the accessibility of digital reports. And working in partnership with these individuals, these organizations to bring such a world to fruition. So our pie chart that uh, you saw a few slides ago um, circles uh, uh, a couple of areas that are cross-cutting areas. And one of these is uh, understandability and accessibility, and the other is stakeholder engagement. So let me first comment on what we mean by understandability and accessibility of IFRS reporting requirements. And this is an area where we are already active. So our work here is primarily about helping 
users of standards, that is in this case, companies, auditors, regulators, and national standard setters, to better understand the requirements so they in turn can provide the information that is most useful to investors. So for instance, in the context of individual projects, we take care to reduce unnecessary complexity and costs while improving the quality of the information for investors. In addition, we put a lot of effort to ensure that our requirements are clearly drafted, leveraging the expertise of our editorial and translation teams, as well as external reviewers. With accessibility, for instance, we publish uh, annotated versions of our standards. And I also hope that you've had the opportunity to experience our new website, uh, which includes uh, some fantastic new tools for easier navigation of the electronic version of our standards. Now, if we were to increase uh, the level of focus on this activity, uh, the kind of thing we could do is take a comprehensive look at the different areas and the causes of unnecessary complexity in our standards today. Or, for instance, we could explore uh, how we could change the way the standards are developed so they are more clearly articulated using more consistent terminology and structure where it's practical and helpful to do so. That approach could be applied to amending existing standards on a go or on a go forward basis when developing new standards. With accessibility, we could increase our use of technology and other tools such as flowcharts and tailoring tools to help stakeholders find materials that are most relevant to them and help them understand how those materials relate to each other. So finally, our, our we have a cross-cutting activity on stakeholder engagement. It's what we're doing today. It's a very good example of it. And I, I'm sure you all appreciate what that means. And again, you'll see on the right-hand side of this chart, some examples of further initiatives that the board could pursue if additional resources were devoted to this activity. Awesome. Thank you so much, Nick. Um, so now we're going to ask you to indicate which of the board's main activities you think um, the board should increase the level of focus on. So um, I think a polling question is coming right up um, on your screen for that. So for um, options A to F in the polling question, um, you can um, pick more than one answer. Um, but clearly, if you think the board should be broadly maintaining the current balance of activities, then um, you should only vote for option G. Um, so with that, if you would like to cast your votes on what you think we should be doing more of. And I'm seeing the results come in. Thank you. I'm going to give um, others um, a chance to tell us what they think. Right, I'm seeing more trickle in. I think um, we still have a few more people that I know are here with us today. So, gonna give it a couple more. All right, I think we can probably um, end the polls now and share the results with um, everyone. Could we put up the, the polls for everyone to see? So I think I think those are, those are there is yes. my understanding. So it's it's interesting, isn't it? I should, there's there's quite a broad spread of of views here. Um, many many thinking that we should actually do move away from our current level of, of focus. Uh, uh, and uh, I, I guess appetite for both reinforcing uh, the maintenance and consistent application of our standards, but still people seeing uh, some need for work on new IFRS standards and major amendments, but, but really quite a broad spread of views here overall. Yeah, I think definitely. And, you know, also seeing um, a lot of um, votes for digital financial reporting as well, which um, are, are consistent with what we've been um, hearing in other um, outreach so far. So 
Thank you for that. So if we now go on to our second um, polling question. So here, um, increasing, you know, the, the focus in, in one area, as, as Nick mentioned earlier, would mean that, you know, less resources are available for other aspects of the board's activities. So our second polling question, um, which should be um, up on your screen, um, is, you know, one that's often more challenging, but it's essentially asking you the flip side of the question, which is which of the board's main activities do you think the board should decrease? its level of focus um, on. So similarly, unless you think that the current balance of the board's activities is about right, and in that case, you vote for option G, um, let us know which of the activities you think the board should decrease its um, level of focus on. And again, for options A to F, you can select more than one answer. So I'm seeing a couple of people already casted their votes. Thank you. I'd like to encourage um, others to do the same. So far, I think we're seeing um, a bit of a gravitation towards um, the I first for SME standard, but I'd like to give everyone else an opportunity to, to cast their vote before we close the poll. All right, I think we've probably had um, most people in. So I can, like I said, um, about 30% of you think we should be, uh, the board should be decreasing its level of focus on the IFRS for SME standard. Um, and then, you know, about another 22% of you think that the current balance is, is about right. And um, some um, suggestions there, um, you know, 17% of you looking at reducing um, digital financial reporting, new IFRS standards. So again, quite a bit of a mix, but um, we're seeing more gravitation towards reducing the level of focus on the IFRS for SME standards. So thank you all for your engagement on those polling questions. And um, we'll look forward to your um, feedback on the questions and the request for information on this um, first objective. And as you can see on this slide, what we'd like to hear really is your rationale for why the board should increase, leave or change or decrease its current level of focus on each activity. So trying to understand a bit more as to why you voted the way you did over the last two polling questions. Um, so to the extent possible, um, it would be extremely useful feedback for the board if you can specify the types of work within each activity that the board should do more or less of. And then finally, if you have any thoughts on other activities within the current scope of the board's work that the board should undertake, we would love to hear that as well. So with that, I think we're ready to move on to the second and third objectives of the agenda consultation, both of which focus on our largest area of activity, new IFRS standards and major amendments to the standards. And for that, uh, Rachel, can I turn it over to you to take us through that? Of course. Thank you, Aisha. And hello, everyone. As we previously mentioned, we and our stakeholders have limited capacity. This means that we cannot unfortunately take onto our work plan all of the reporting issues and projects that our stakeholders would like us to do. We need to be able to prioritise those projects and for us to prioritise those projects we need to, some criteria to help the board assess the relative priority of particular financial reporting projects. This is why the second objective of the agenda consultation is to seek feedback on the criteria that the board intends to use to assess the priority of financial reporting issues. The board has proposed seven uh, criteria that it intends to use in this agenda consultation. These are set out on this slide. The board will consider the importance of the matter to investors, whether there is a deficiency in current reporting, the type of companies that are going to be affected by a particular reporting issue and the jurisdictions where that issue is more prevalent. The board will also consider how pervasive the matter is. We'll also consider three practical criteria, the potential project's interaction with other projects that are on the board's agenda, the complexity and feasibility of the potential project and its solutions, and the capacity of the board and its stakeholders to progress the potential project. 
On top of these seven criteria is an overarching consideration. The board needs to be convinced that a potential project will meet investors' meet needs while taking into account the costs of producing the information. These criteria are, of course, quite subjective, and it won't be an exact science uh, uh, in the way in which the board uses those criteria. It's going to require the board to make judgments and how the board will assess the relative importance of each criteria is likely to vary depending upon the particular project. In the request for information, we're seeking your feedback on whether the board has identified the right criteria to use. And in addition, we would like to hear from you whether there are any additional criteria that the board should consider and what those criteria are. So having discussed the criteria that the board would potentially use to identify the priority of financial reporting issues, we're now going to go on to look at um, um, the final objective in the agenda consultation. And this focuses on the priority of new financial reporting issues that could be added to the work plan. We've already mentioned that the board has limited capacity to add new projects to its work plan. And this is because the board has already set aside some capacity to deal with some other activities. For example, the board has decided um, or has tentatively decided to continue projects that are already on its work plan. This is because the stakeholders have identified those pro projects as priorities in previous agenda consultations and reprioritizing those projects could lead to inefficient starts and stops in the projects. Secondly, the board is required by its due process to conduct post-implementation reviews during that period. And these post-implementation reviews are listed on the slide. The purpose of a post-implementation review is to identify whether a newly issued standard is operating in the way in which the board intended. Finally, the board has set aside some capacity to undertake any time-sensitive projects that might arise after the agenda consultation has been completed. Past experience has shown us that it is important to set aside some capacity for these projects that might occur after the close of an agenda consultation. For example, in recent years, we had to deal with a number of uh, reporting issues that arose out of eyeball reform. And those issues had not been envisaged when uh, we completed the 2015 agenda consultation. Taking into account these existing calls on the board's capacity, we think that the board will have the ability to take on two to three large projects or four to five medium-sized projects or seven to eight small projects or a combination of those. That, of course, assumes that the board continues to spend 40 to 45 percent of its resources on uh, standard setting and major amendments to, to standards. The request for information um, includes um, a number of described projects. Um, these projects are described in order to help stakeholders answer the questions in the agenda consultation about the priority of particular financial reporting issues that the board could add to its work plan. The list of described projects was developed mainly through discussion with our consultative groups. Uh, the objective of putting together this list of described projects is to provide stakeholders and the board with a common understanding of the issues that could be addressed in a potential project. Let's take a simple example. If we look at the statement of cash flows, do you want a project that would result in a fundamental review to IS7? Or would you be more interested in some targeted improvements to the statement of cash flows? The descriptions in the request for information are intended to highlight what the board could address in a particular project and to enable you to give focus feedback on that. I think it's really important to remember when looking at these lists of potential projects that this is not a draft work plan for the board. Firstly, there are far more projects described in the request for information than the board could possibly take on in the period from 2022 to 2026. And secondly, and perhaps more importantly, we're really um, keen to hear from you about any additional issues that are not described in the request for information that you think should be a priority for the board.
The list of projects described in the request for information are highlighted on this slide. For each of these projects, uh, the request for information describes the, the scope of the project or the potential scope of the project and whether it is likely to be a small, medium or large project. Again, this is all to ensure that we're on the same page when you give us your views about which projects are a priority for you. We won't be asking for feedback from you today on which projects you think um, should be a priority, but when you do provide us with feedback on the consultation, I think the key thing to remember is that the board and the stakeholders have limited capacity. So what we'd really want to hear from you is uh, which projects you have strong views on, whether we should be doing those projects or indeed whether there are projects on there that you think we should not be doing. The questions that we have for you uh, in relation to new financial reporting issues are listed on this slide. What we'd like to hear from you is what priority do you give each of the potential projects described in the request for information? Is it a high, medium or low priority? And importantly, why do you um, put that priority on the project? Why is that a high priority for you or why is it a low priority? That helps us in making the decisions and applying the criteria I discussed earlier. Secondly, what we'd like to hear from you is should the board add any other financial reporting issues to its work plan from 2022 to 2026 that are not described in the request for information? Finally, we have a catch-all question in the request for information asking whether you have any other comments on the board activities and work plan. Thanks very much, Rachel, and uh, to both of you for walking our audience through the key objectives of the agenda consultation. Um, I'd just like to remind our audience, if you have any questions for us today, um, please use the box on the left-hand side of your screen to submit them. I'm already seeing a few um, come in, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll save some time um, in just a little bit to get to your questions. Um, but while you're putting your questions in for us, I just wanted to um, briefly point out the materials that we have published um, and that you may find useful when you're putting together your response to the consultation. So what you can see on this slide are various links to the consultation document, the press release, as well as um, supporting materials like an investor perspective article and videos on the request for information. Um, a recording of the webinar today will, will also be made available to the project page. Um, we've also provided various options for you to share your feedback with us. Um, as always, you can discuss with us during outreach activities, and we welcome the opportunity to engage with you directly in that respect. Um, you can provide your feedback by submitting a comment letter, which is the more traditional and most helpful format for us. But you can also submit um, um, an online survey. So we've provided the survey option for stakeholders that have limited time and resources to write a comment letter. And really, our hope is to garner as much feedback as possible on this consultation. So I'd encourage you to get involved and you know, please encourage others to do the same. So having run through all the points, um, I think it's time to turn to the questions um, from the end is that's um, coming while we've been talking. And so the first one, um, I'm going to turn this one over to you, Rachel. So I'll read the question out. It says, you have mentioned capacity. Appreciate that the board's capacity is limited. Have you considered increasing the current level of resources to enable the board to do more on all of its activities? Um, Rachel, can I come to you for that question, please? Yes, of course I should. It's a very good question. Um, it's not just the board's capacity um, that's important here. Uh, obviously, we have stakeholders. So, um, there is a potential for us to increase resources to some extent, um, but then what we need to ensure is that stakeholders are able to respond to the consultation documents that we put out as a result of that additional work that we undertake. Uh, then secondly, um, once we've got through the consultation process, we need to ensure that um, preparers of financial statements have um, the time and the capacity to implement any proposed changes, any final changes to the standards that are implemented as a result of those additional efforts. So uh, we need to think about not just the capacity of um, the ISB to take on new projects, but also the capacity of stakeholders to take on new projects. What I would also say is that um, it's quite a specialised area, the area of, um, uh, of standard setting. And so it's not necessarily that straightforward to add additional capacity um, to our staff and to the board. So, um, so yes, um, 
we need to think about both the board and um, the stakeholders when looking at this question. And um, as a result, we think there is probably limited ability to um, increase the board's work um, capacity to do work beyond what we're currently doing. Great. Thank you, Rachel. Um, there's another question here. Um, I think this one, um, Nick, um, just a heads up, I'll be bringing this one to you. So the question says, um, I have noted that one of the potential projects that's described in the request for information is on climate related risks. I thought that would be for the IWSB, I guess the, the potential um, new sustainability um, standards board. Um, what can the ISB possibly do on climate related risks? Uh, thanks, and, and that's a that's a great question to have. So, just to clarify, that the body that sits above the uh, ISB, uh, which is the IFRS Foundation, have a group of trustees. They are consulting or continue to consult whether the foundations should set up an international sustainability standards board, uh, and that is ongoing work. And from the first consultation that we've done that space, uh, I think there's consensus that if that board was set up, it should turn its attention quite early to climate related risks and indeed opportunities in that space. But the remit of that board is, is to consider issues that wouldn't, uh, or, or matters or how issues and information is presented about that wouldn't fall within the remit of financial reporting. Um, uh, the, IS, the staff of the ISB published some educational material in November 2020, which looked at how our existing uh, standards, the standards of the uh, ISB, can or are applicable to climate-related risks. Uh, and But this is clearly within the context of financial reporting. So what this potential project within the agenda consultation explores is are the further changes to the existing ISB standards that relate to climate issues uh, in terms of how they are reported within the financial reports. And so this is complementary to any work that may be undertaken uh, by an international sustainability standards board in the future. And it, it, it also shines a light on what will be a need for those two boards to operate uh, with a degree of connectivity and understanding what each other board is, is, is doing in whether areas of overlap. So, very valid question, but it's about where the focus and the remit of those individual boards uh, exists. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. Um, the next question um, touches on resources. Um, so, Rachel, I think it's, it's a follow-up to, to the one you answered earlier, so I'll, I'll turn this one to you again. Um, it says, given your limited resources to add um, new projects, um, is the IASB open to stopping current projects in favour of new ones? Well, as I said in the presentation, the board's current leaning is to continue the projects that are currently on its work plan. Um, and two reasons for that. Firstly, um, those projects have been identified as a priority in previous agenda consultations and therefore uh, responding to um, to that feedback, it's important to, to, to continue with those projects. Uh, the second point, of course, is um, that it is inefficient to start and stop projects. Um, having said that, um, we will, of course, listen to the feedback from this agenda consultation. And if there is a clear indication from um, our stakeholders that some of the projects that are currently on the agenda ought to be revisited and potentially reconsidered, then, of course, the board will take account of that feedback when developing its work plan for 2022 to 2026. Thank you, Rachel. Um, so we, we have some um, more time for, for, for more audience questions. So I'd like to encourage um, our audience to, to continue sending in your questions. Uh, we, we have time to, to address as many as we can. Um, the next question I think uh, might be reflecting on the, um, the, the second polling um, question where we saw more of a gravitation towards reducing the level of focus on the I first for SME standard. So Nick, I'll be turning this question to you. Um, the question says, I, I'll read it out. The IFRS for SME standard is important for many entities. In light of the board's capacity constraints, will the board consider setting up a subcommittee to focus on the development of the IFRS for SMEs so it remains fit for purpose? Uh, thanks. And, and the board does appreciate the importance of this standard. You know, as I mentioned earlier, it's used in 86 jurisdictions. And uh, the standard is currently going through one of its periodic reviews to make sure that it does remain fit for purpose. And I think here we have to balance 
And it's certainly the feedback we have from our stakeholders in this particular space, the need to balance ensuring the standards remain high quality, but trading that off, off against making overly uh, frequent changes. So they want a stable platform that changes uh, periodically. Now, in terms of the support for the standard, there's already we already have a consultative group uh, for the standard, and so we hear directly from stakeholders in that space. And with with many with all of our projects, um, there will be from time to time a set of uh, particular board members who will have a focus on that area. And so we have uh, some of my colleagues will be board advisors on this standard. So at the moment, there is no uh, intention to do any more in terms of setting up. Uh, particular groups, we think we have the structure in place that uh, certainly allows us to hear very clearly the voices and the views of the stakeholders in that space. Thanks, Nick. Um, the, the, the next question, uh, Rachel, I, I think I'll, I'll send this to you. Um, the question says, the last agenda consultation resulted in a theme of better communication in financial reporting. Um, is this a consultation going to have a theme as well, or would better communications continue to be the theme for the next five years? Um, we haven't yet decided on whether this consultation will have a theme. Um, to some extent, that will depend upon the feedback that we get as part of this agenda consultation. If we see emerging from um, the recommendations that we get from our stakeholders a theme a theme emerging, then certainly we'd be open to developing an overarching theme for the agenda consultation and the work that the board's going to be doing in 2022 to 2026. In relation to better communication, that's going to be continue to be an important priority for the board. There are a number of projects that have been completed in relation to better communication. So, for example, materiality practice statement. Um, we um, have undertaken some uh, um, amendments to IS-1 as a result of the better communication theme. But there are a number of activities in relation to better communication that are on the board's current work plan that will, that will continue over that period. So, the work on primary financial statements project, um, the work on the targeted standards level review um, of disclosures and um, the work in relation to, to management commentary and our work that we're doing um, developing and maintaining the IFRS taxonomy all relate to better communication and will continue to be important parts of the board's work plan uh, in the coming few years. So better communication will continue to be important. A theme may emerge from this um, agenda consultation. If it does, we will move ahead with the theme. Thanks, Rachel. Um, this next question uh, is talking about interaction with, with the um, FASB. So, so Nick, I'll, I'll probably come to you with, with this question. So I, it's a two-part question, actually. Um, so it asks, um, is the board working with the FASB on this agenda consultation? Um, will the board consider convergence with US GAAP as a criterion when it is setting the priority of projects to add to the work plan? So I'm um, taking those uh, two questions in turn then, Aisha. Um, as it happens, uh, the, uh, our counterparts uh, in, in the US, the FASB, are undertaking their own agenda consultation at this time. We expect we'll have the conclusions of both our uh, work, uh, our consultation, and their own around about the same time. Uh, so we're, we're, we are mindful of that. Uh, we are we are very interested in how that develops. I'm sure they are interested in us. There's some overlap in things around potential projects and there's some others which will be unique to their circumstances and some which will be unique to theirs. So it, there's, there's no formal, uh, this isn't a joint project, it's not a formal activity, but with much of our work, uh, we're very interested in sharing views with others around the world and that includes with, with the FASB. Um, will we consider, will the board consider convergence at, with US GAAP? as uh, a criteria in terms of setting the priority of projects uh, to add to the work plan. Um, there's no longer a formal convergence agenda between IFRS and US GAAP, and so it won't be one of those um, considerations uh, that Rachel talked about in terms of the criteria. Unless, of course, we hear back from stakeholders through this agenda consultation that suggest that perhaps that should be added as a criteria, and then the board will have to consider that in turn. 
Thank you, Nick. And uh, just looking at the clock, I think we, we've had lots of great questions in today, but uh, looking at the time, this might be our last question. Um, so Rachel, I'll come to you first with this question. Um, it says, you identified priorities from the last agenda consultation and some of them have not been started. Why is that? Um, and then the second part of the question is, does that also mean you won't start any projects you commit to as a result of this ongoing agenda consultation? Thank you, Aisha. Yes, there are a number of projects that um, were added as potential projects as part of the 2015 agenda consultation that unfortunately we haven't got round to. Um, the main reason for not getting round to those projects are unexpected things that arose in between the agenda consultations. So, um, for example, we didn't expect um, to have to do the work on eyeball reform um, that has arisen. Uh, secondly, some of the um, things that have come out of the uh, the, the pandemic have also meant that projects that we had hoped to add to our agenda and to, to make a start on during the, the current period haven't actually made it to the agenda. Um, what um, I would say is that we've now set aside deliberately some capacity to deal with unexpected issues as they arise. Whether or not that capacity will be sufficient, of course, time will tell. Um, but hopefully we're in a better position in terms of being able to, to add, um, add projects and at least make a start on them in the period from, 22, uh, from 2022 to 2026. What I would say about the projects that we haven't yet um, got round to that arose out of the 2015 agenda consultation, um, those have been included in the request for information in the described projects in there. And so if people still consider those projects to be a priority, for example, variable and contingent consideration is one of those projects, then we will, um, of course, hear feedback as part of the agenda consultation and we'll consider adding that as one of the projects to the board's work plan for the period from 2022 to 2026. Um, thank you, um, Rachel. Um, I did say that was going to be a last question, but we have one more question in from the audience. And um, um, so we'll, we'll take that one. And uh, Nick, I'll, I'll come to you for this one. Um, the question, I'll read it out. It says, since Islamic financial institutions are growing rapidly and most of the countries still use IFRS for reporting, what is the plan for harmonization of Islamic financial reporting in IFRS? So again, this remains uh, an area where uh, the board is mindful of and uh, works closely with a, a working group in this space uh, to, to see uh, how we can obviously align objectives here. Um, and as, as with ever, it's a question of resources and, and priorities, but we are very mindful of this. And I think it will be through that working group that will continue to influence um, how uh, we can get convergence and uh, respond to the needs of that specific group of stakeholders. They think that accounting standard setting activity should take a backseat to sustainability standard setting activity, given its urgency, at least until sustainability standards are bedded in. And Rika, can I ask you to answer that question, please? I'm sorry, I take a while to unmute myself. <laughs> Thank you, Rafael. That's a good question. And then also, as Rafael mentioned in the presentation, the board agenda consultation is about how to prioritize its various activities within the current scope of the world work, so such as financial statement and management commentary for profit-oriented company, companies. So whereas the trustees work, it's about a proposal for creating a new international sustainability standards board to develop the global standards for sustainability reporting. So what ISV can do is that uh, we can continue to set requirements for financial statements and some of these requirements incorporate sustainability matters such as climate related risk and their, their financial implications. For example, we could enhance the requirement for disclosures about um, uh, sources of estimation and certainty, or we could broaden the requirement in ISR D6 impairment of asset for cash flow projections to be used in measuring value in use when testing asset for impairment. But uh, please keep in mind that our standards are principle-based. 
This means that the standards require the management to consider and assess the material events and circumstances for the entity, even though specific matters like climate-related risks are not specifically mentioned in the standards. So in this context, we have published the education materials, and you can find it on our website. Another thing I want to highlight is the fact is important is, is um, if decisions from the trustees review identify the need for capacity from the board to support any interaction between the work of the ISB and the new IAS International Sustainability Standards Board, and such a need will be considered in finalizing our priorities for the next five years. Thank you. Thank you, Rika. Rafal, could I add um, just one extra thought to that question? I I, um, I can absolutely agree with um, what Rika said, but um, just wondering whether part of the question is also asking about stakeholder capacity and the level of change um, that might be coming from both accounting standard setting as well as potential sustainability standard setting. And I, I think it, it's, um, it, it's, it's certainly a view out there, and that would be something that would be helpful to include in your feedback to us. Um, there is a counter view that I have also heard in some of the trustee um, discussions, which is that um, um, there's a desire to make sure that um, the ISB standard setting on accounting is not um, curtailed or um, negatively affected by the work, any potential work on sustainability. So there are do two different views, and I think any feedback on that would definitely be helpful. Thank you both. Uh, I can see another question. So I will ask Nidhi, uh, you to answer that one. Let me just read it aloud. Should it not be one of the objectives to remove some of the very old standards, for example, IS-26? It seems very few jurisdictions use them. Thanks, Rafal. That's a great question. Um, it, again, I think it's, it's, a, it's a fair point to include in your feedback. I, I think the consideration there that would be helpful to explore if you do include this in your feedback is whether um, removing some of those older standards is really a priority if nobody uses it. I think the benefit of doing so would just be simplifying and reducing um, I think we lost Nidhi for a while, but I will now. Oh, I'm sorry. Now it's better. Thank you. <laughs> now you can hear me. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So all I was saying is I think there's two sides to the the coin there, and it would be good to have um, the the feedback in the in the letter. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, you Nidhi. Thank you. And we've got one more question. Uh, I will ask Rika to answer that one. Let me let me read the question. Are there any plans for standard setting, either a new standard or an amendment to existing standard for cryptocurrencies or other instruments as store of value, for example, gold? So over to you, to you, Rika. Thank you. Thank you for that question. I think, uh, um, I mean, uh, it's up to the feedback we are going to receive because uh, I we have already had a lot of uh, uh, interest and demand about a uh, uh, question about uh, how to account for cryptocurrency and uh, not only cryptocurrency, but also a lot more um, about uh, some improvement in uh, uh, accounting for intangible asset or so on, and uh, probably um, including a commodity uh, product as well. But uh, at this moment, we are still in the process of uh, receiving the feedback uh, from the uh, stakeholders. So we just uh, want to hear more about uh, your uh, demand and the need about uh, how we can uh, improve the financial reporting in that context. At this moment, we have already uh, published the uh, uh, educational materials on uh, uh, cryptocurrency 
and which is uh, based on the agenda consultation, agenda decision at the interpretation committee. So I think uh, you might find that uh, useful for you in practice. Thank you very much, Rika. I can see another question, so I will ask uh, Nidhi this time to answer this one. Let me read the question. Does the board consider that the huge industry on interpreting standards among audit firms, preparers and regulators indicates that the board should focus more on ensuring consistent application and interpretation? Over to you, Nidhi. Thank you, Rafal. An another great question. So um, the objective of the board's work alongside the Interpretations Committee is to ensure consistent application of IFRS standards on a global basis so that it is the standards are, in fact, global, not just in name, but also in practice. And the way that the board and the Interpretations Committee does that is through providing a common understanding of the words in the standard. And that can be through educational materials, it can be through um, interpretation or uh, agenda coming from the interpretations committee amendments. Um, so how we do that or, or what we what we do it needs to also consider whether um, any potential interpretations would undermine the principles-based nature of IFRS standards. So it's trying to uh, achieve a fine balance there in providing sufficient uh, guidance so that people can consistently apply the standards around the world, but at the same time, not undermine the principles-based na uh, nature of, of um, the standards. Um, and, and so those are the things that the board considers when it, it thinks about what more to do with consistent application. Thank you. Thanks, Nidhi. I can see one more question. Will the ISB complete MC project, MC Management Commentary project? Otherwise, the ISB and the new ISSB will cooperate to complete MC project. And uh, can I ask you, Rika, to, un to answer this one? Uh, thank you very much for this question. We are going to, yeah, we have a plan to complete management commentary project, of course, and uh, we are in process of a consultation uh, to receive the feedback uh, to the, uh, our consultation document at this moment. And then, of course, we, we are going to take into consideration about the trustees' decision over what they are going to expect us to interconnect uh, with IWASB. But uh, still, we consider uh, it's quite important for uh, uh, continue this project to support uh, investors and other stakeholders' understanding of a financial report. Thank you, Rika. And one more question for Nidhi this time. Does the board have a plan to review all of the matters that the IFRI decided not to add to their agenda and then amend the respective standards appropriately? There are quite a few topics that have not been addressed over the years. If you could answer this one, Nidhi. Yep. Thanks, Rafal. So um, a couple of thoughts there. The first is that um, some of the projects that we've included in the agenda consultation are actually derived from um, topics that were taken to the IFRIC. So for example, um, there's one project on um, IFRS 5, Discontinued Operations and Assets Held for Sale. If we were to prioritize that project and add it to the work plan, as part of that project, we would take a look at all of the, the questions that have been taken to the IFRIC and that the IFRIC decided not to pursue. So it's it's already embedded as part of the request for information. And certainly, um, if there are other projects that you think the board should take on or other questions from IFRIC that you think the board should take on, it would be very helpful to have um, that, that feedback in your letter. Thank you, Nidhi. We've got some more questions coming in through the chat box. Um, let me read the next one. Certain jurisdictions issue local interpretations, application guidance, similar to agenda decisions. Can ISB coordinate to ensure uniformity? Can I ask you, Rika, to address this one, please? Rafael, thank you very much. Yes, uh, we had that type of concern uh, some stakeholder had. Um, and then also we believe that the value of the use of the IFR standards for stakeholders uh, is uh, 
to apply our standards consistently in practice. So uh, I think uh, uh, the interpretation committee's work uh, will help them to apply the consistent application. And uh, we uh, understand that we need to make sure the application of the uh, consistent application of the new standard as well as existent, existent standards globally. Thank you very much, Rika. And perhaps our final question. Uh, criteria number five for assessing the priority of financial reporting issues states that the potential project's interaction with other projects on the work plan. Uh, so uh, there is a comment and, and a question. The ISB should clarify the consequences on priority if the potential project has more interaction with other projects on the work plan. For example, does more interaction with other projects means higher or lower priority will be set? Can I ask you, Nidhi, to take that one? Yes, thank you, Rafal. It, it, that's helpful feedback that we should provide some clarification. The way I'm thinking about it is that if there is more um, intersection with other projects, that would suggest that it is more likely to be a higher priority because there are synergies with doing related projects at the same time. However, that's not always the case because at the same time, the board is also looking at how it can progress projects. And if it makes sense to carve a large project into maybe two or three smaller projects to get improvements to financial reporting out to investors and cost improvements to preparers sooner rather than later, it might also do that. So again, it could go both ways, but I would generally expect that intersections would mean that um, a project would be more of a priority if you just look at that criterion in and of itself. Thank you. Thank you both for answering the questions. So uh, that brings us to the end of this webinar. And thank you so much for joining us today and thank you for all the great questions. We are really looking forward to hearing your views on the consultation by the 27th of September. Take care, everyone.